the numeric keypad can really help you zip around Pro Tools. So in this video, we'll take a look at how we can use the numeric keypad here in Pro Tools. Now, the first thing you need to know, let's come up here to set up preferences, operation tab. There are different modes for our numeric keypad. We have it on transport. That's what we're going to be talking about here is the transport mode. And also know I'm not going to talk about every single possible option that you could use your numeric keypad for. I'm going to go over the things that I think you'll actually use most. So let's go ahead and get started here. Start with zero, why not? What happens when we press zero? We get playback. Press it again to stop. So just like our space bar in that case. Very cool. One, what does one do? Well, one's not doing anything now, but let's hit two. That's jumping us up one bar. So it's fast forward. We can hold it down, fast forward, hold down one to rewind. So one and two, one is rewind, two is fast forward. Of course, we can tap that to go one bar at a time because our roller is bars and beats. We could always change that, by the way, if we wanted minutes and seconds, and we could do that as well. Of course, you can change your counter to uh, whatever you want, but let's change it back to bar and beat. So that's one and two, one and two, fast forward and uh, rewind there. So let's move on to three, press it, no tracks are record enabled. Three will drop you right into record. So that's our record uh, enabled there. So if I happen to have a track, let's come over here, uh, record enabled. Make sure there's an input on it. We'll just grab something. We won't actually record any audio. Just hit record there. And if we hit three, there we go. We start recording. We press zero to stop. And there you go. So three will drop you right into record, just like F12 will, for example. So what does four do? Four is loop record on or off. So if you have a selection that you want to loop, of course we can play back there. We can choose whether or not to loop that with four, all right? Five, turn off loop mode there. By the way, that's the same thing as just coming to your play button and choosing loop, same thing. So we can just cycle that real quick. Now five, that's record loop. All right, same thing as right clicking and choosing loop record. All right, go back to the beginning. If I wanted some, if I had some selection or I just wanted to loop record, I could of course set everything up so whenever I drop into record, make sure I hit five to turn loop record on. We'll press three to record. And this is just gonna loop record for us. Works great for MIDI as well. So you just keep recording. Zero to stop that. All right, so turn loop record off. Now we have six. That is our quick punch. Again, we can always right click and choose quick punch, but there is quick punch, which means we can punch in to recording. We'll just come down here and take these off here. Make sure that's on solo. And we can just make sure that track is armed. And if we're playing back, three drops me right into record because we have quick punch on. Three takes me out of record. All right. Now, if I didn't have quick punch on, turn quick punch off, and I just play back, and I hit three, it's not gonna, it's not gonna drop me in. Okay. There's of course other ways you could use quick punch. We could have it on and start recording with three, and then drop out with uh, three again there. Okay, boom, that's quick punch. Let's go back to the beginning there. What does seven do? Hit seven, you don't see much, but that is our metronome on or off, our click. So up here we have a click right there. And if I were playing back, you hear it? Seven again, turns it off. You hear it better down here. Just playing back, seven, turn your click on, seven again, turn it off. All right, what about eight? Hit eight, that's our count off. So count off on or off. Of course, this will come into play when using three, for example. So uh, let me record enable this track and we'll hit eight to turn the count off on. Now, right now we have a two bars right here set up for our count off. So if I hit three to record, I get my two bar count off before it starts recording. And because I still have quick punch on, I can actually just drop out of that record and drop back in, drop out. There we go. So we can turn quick punch off. Of course, the same thing happens whenever we start to record, we're going to get the two bar count off. All right, so a quick and easy way to turn your count off on or off with just that eight key. From there, we have nine. What does nine do? Well, nine is MIDI merge. MIDI merge or replace mode as it's sometimes called. So check that out. What MIDI merge basically does is it allows you to 
uh, record more MIDI into a track that already has MIDI on it. So here we have a, a uh, piano track. Let me just pop up here. Right? So if I had this record enabled, and right now MIDI merge is on, okay, let's turn MIDI merge off, and I'll just hit three to start recording, and I'll just hit a note on my keyboard controller. So three, we're gonna get our count off, two bars in this case. Zero to stop that. What happened was it erased that MIDI that was there because MIDI merge wasn't on. All right, control Z, pop out of that. Let's hit eight to turn that count off off. Then we'll hit three again, but this time let's hit nine first. So we have MIDI merge turned on. Now we'll hit three to start recording. There we go. Now we merged those new notes into our already existing MIDI clip. All right, so that is your MIDI merge on or off real quick. So now we get to our keys around the edges here. What do they do? Well, let's turn this. I'll take that off of solo, put this drums track on solo there. Squeeze this down a bit. And we'll start down here with period. Now, if I just hit period, nothing happens. Hit it again, nothing happens, hit it again, nothing happens. But we can use period in conjunction with the enter key here. So if I hit enter, I can create a new memory location. Now I already have some memory locations up here. But what I want to do, this is actually we could just use our keys, can't we? We'll just fast forward. Let's just go forward several bars. So right here I want a new memory location. Press enter. Right now it's numbered four. You can see that up here because I already have other memory locations out there. So we hit enter to just accept that. Of course, you can always go in there and, and change some of your options. So I have memory location four there, memory location one, memory location two, memory location three. If I hit play, we're gonna start playing from our current position. But if I want to quickly go back to say memory location two, period, O, two, period, drops me right down to location two. And I'll play back from that position. Very good. Period, O, three, period, drops me to location three. Now I have location four down there, as you can see, it, that's actually period 23 period. That's location number 23. So you can, let me actually just uh, zoom back here a bit, rewind, we'll just hit enter. Let's number this one, uh, 19, okay. So that memory location is named location five. You can of course change the name to whatever you want. So we'll go with period, 04 period, drops us down to location four, now we can go period 19 period right down to, in this case, what's named location five, but we set it up to be recalled with 19. All right, so that's how you recall your memory locations and how you set up new memory locations. Uh, from there, we can also use the period key to set up our windows and have window configurations. So this can be window configuration one. In this case, we'll do period 01 plus. So now we have an edit window configuration and we can you know change this around to different uh, kinds of windows mix window whatever you want but for now we'll just leave it on window layout you can give it a name this is called number one hit okay now let me open up uh, we'll say fm8 here we'll put this here and imagine having a bunch of plugins open or a bunch of different things uh, going on uh, in your track that you want set a certain way all right and we'll call this period 02 plus We'll just accept this. Okay. So now let's recall our first window configuration. Period, 01, asterisk, or star key, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. Now period, 02, asterisk, and that brings that window configuration right back up. All right, so that's a couple ways you can use your period key to set up your memory locations, to recall your memory locations, and of course your window configurations as well. So again, I can go period, 02, period, and that's going to drop me to my uh, my memory location, or I can go period 01 asterisk, and that's going to drop me to my window configuration. Okay, and again, definitely check out, so see period 03 plus, definitely check out the window configuration. It can really save you time here in Pro Tools, but this video is about the numeric keyboard and how to use it, not not about specific uh, specific things, because this video would be an hour long. Let's go up to the top here and hit our slash key. Well, that dropped us into our start, end, and length. We can just keep hitting slash to cycle through that real quickly. Turn that back off, go through here. So we are starting on four. Maybe I wanna start on five. You can always use the numbers, of course, across the top as well. And sometimes that, that actually works better because you have one hand over here and then one hand over here. So again, slash five, 
then slash to drop us to the end. We want to go down to eight. Now we can hit enter if we want from there, and there is our selection. Now we'll go through, before I go back to that, we'll go to the minus and the plus. This is our nudge value. So minus is going to nudge us back, plus will nudge it forward. Very easy, very simple. Now this will also nudge, uh, you know, individual things. Um, one thing we can do, let's just, I'll just grab this whole clip right here and let me hit minus, which I can't go back, but let me hit plus. Now I'm nudging this whole clip in this case, forward and backwards. And this of course is contingent on what we have set up here. So right now we have quarter notes. We could of course change this to a bar, maybe a 64th notes. You can see much smaller. And of course we can change our counter or just you know, our nudge value. But let's change our counter to say time code. Let me come in here and make this on time code just so you can actually see it. And right now it's on one second. Let's do five frames. Okay, so right down here. So I hit minus, drives me down to two, seven, 12. Okay, and you can get really, really fine here to say a quarter frame. I mean, it's barely moving at this point, you know? Okay, and again, you can do that to selections, you can do that to clips, you can do that to individual things, uh, whatever you want. So again, let's hit, uh, actually, let me, let's go back here because we're, we are in music. And for music, we're going to use bars and beats most, uh, most of the time. So let's make sure this is on bars and beats, our counter and our nudge values. Come up here. Let's make sure this is on, we'll just say eighth notes. That's, that's fine. Let me squeeze down a bit here. Get rid of that selection. Now we'll come back up here to slash. This time we're going to go, let me actually slack up here. And this time we'll hit uh, nine. Okay. Now, instead of making a selection on the end, I'm just going to cycle down to the length and type in, oh, 17. Enter. So now we have that selection. Again, we can nudge that selection or we can play back from that position that we're, that we're of course, starting in. We could record, we could uh, do loop record, we could loop playback with all of our buttons there, you know, set up our MIDI merge or not, our count off, on or off, and uh, of course the metronome. So all of this stuff works in conjunction with each other. Scroll down a bit, select the clip, and we can just nudge that forward or backwards. So that is your nudge value, your, your plus and uh, your plus and your minus. And of course I hit the enter key there. So your plus and your minus are your nudge values. And of course, uh, they can also be used for other things as we saw, such as period 05 plus. Now that's gonna give us a new window configuration. So that's about it, but what about this little asterisk? Now we've already used the uh, asterisk or the star key whenever we were period 02 asterisk, whenever we were recalling our window configurations, period 01 asterisk. We can also just hit asterisk. What does that do? Well, actually I have to be in here and asterisk. So now we can choose down there in our transport. I could type in um, 12, enter, and play back from there. That can drop us in as well. There, 23, enter, play. Takes us to the 23rd bar. All right, so you can drop right into your transport real easy, uh, like the uh, 47, enter. There are, of course, other things you can do, especially in conjunction uh, while holding down other buttons, like you know the control key, alt and whatnot, but those are the main ones, especially zero through nine, and you'll probably be using plus and minus a lot, okay? So again, playback, rewind, fast forward, drop into record real quick there. Uh, four is your play loop, five is your record loop, six is quick punch, seven will turn your metronome on or off real quick, eight to turn your count off on or off real quick, nine, to turn on or off mini merge real quick. And then of course, plus and minus will be your nudge values, which by the way, I'll hit slash here. And let's just make a selection, which I believe I already showed you this, but let's go eight with we'll slash and we'll just say nine, great. And then we can of course nudge just that selection too. We don't actually have to nudge a clip, you can nudge uh, the selection. All right, a lot of stuff you can do. So those are the ones you'll probably be uh, uh, using most there, but of course you'll probably want to set up memory locations, which again, just press enter, set it up to whatever you want and to recall its period and then the number. So in this case, let's just say 19 and then the period again, and that will drop you period 19 period, drop you to that location, period 02 period, drop you to that location. Now to set up your window configuration, once again, in this case, it's called period 47 plus to add that new one. 
just accept it. And of course, to recall it, period 47 asterisk, and that will recall it. We didn't change anything, so you didn't see anything move. So I go period uh, 02 asterisk, then you'll see that come right up. All right, so those are the main things I, I believe that you're going to use. Get familiar with them, uh, get, get used to them, because you will definitely be using these a lot, and they will really, 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 really help you fly around uh, Pro Tools there. So that is using your numeric keypad here in Avid Pro Tools.